next on The Spot. Hot on the heels of the Tokyo Game Show, it's Halo 3 launch week, which I can assure you has nothing to do with the sudden outbreak of the deadly Motaba virus here at the GameSpot offices. It's just... I've got this weird sinus thing, and... I just don't want to give it to the rest of the office, and... We'll be joining GameSpot's own Patient Zero, Jeff Gerstman, and the rest of the crew as we hit the streets in search of some game-fueled launch day excitement, which somehow ends in alcohol-fueled violence. But it's not all headshots and age-inappropriate situations, no sir! We've got some exciting new games in the studio, including The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass for the DS, Tomb Raider Anniversary for the Wii, and Kingdom Under Fire Circle of Doom for the Xbox 360. And be sure to stick around until the end of the show, when we'll have a very special announcement from rock band developer Harmonix that promises to leave your ears ringing and your mind blown. On the spot begins now! It's a show! Yeah! It's our show! It's so, GameSpot's on the spot. Damn right. Yeah, this is our weekly show where we talk about uh, video games and stuff like that. Now, now, Ryan, you, you did the little intro at the top of the show there. Yeah, I did that for the first time. That was yeah. fun. Uh, some pointers. Yeah. No, nowhere on here does it say anything about Rock Band. Are you just making stuff up now? Uh, you know, I have it. Uh, I, I have it on good word that we may have something on Rock Band. So uh, stay tuned to the rest of the show, and uh, we may have a little surprise for you uh, at some point. Or may not. Or may not. We'll find out. Wow. Okay. So seat of our pants here. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's the nature of going live, I guess. Absolutely. So it's been a, a big couple of a weeks here. Absolutely. Uh, around the video game business, what with the Tokyo Game Show and the Halo Three. Tokyo Game Show feels like it was years ago now. It totally does. Uh, yeah. It's we've been, we've been so crazy with the Halo. Which do you want to? Which do I the, guess uh, that's the yeah. I guess we can we can we drove him to his location with this bag on his head so he wouldn't know where he was going. <laughs> but we, we've got this thing. Oh, there's the chief. Yeah. There's this is. This is the helmet there. Yes, there you go. Oh, God. It's very shiny. <laughs> yeah, so... so that's the um, legendary edition. This is the legendary the edition of the Halo that they charge uh, $130 for, more than the price of two regular copies of the game. How about that? Hmm. But it's actually... It? Uh, well, it's, uh, the game's pretty rad, and this helmet's bigger than I thought it would be. Still not big enough to fit on your head, but I guess... I bet if you got in here with, like, a Dremel or something, it would wow. You still wouldn't be able to fit your head in. Not my head. You wear it as like a hat. I can wear it as like a hat, or maybe if I had a baby around, I could put it on that. <laughs> Let's go kidnap some kids. After the show. All right, cool. I'll get my van. <laughs> Excellent. All right, uh, while we get the van ready, why don't we take a look? Uh, Ryan and Homer were running around the Tokyo sh uh, game show floor going all types of crazy. We, we saw that, we we saw saw that, last, that week. last week. Yeah. Uh, they filed one more report, and this is from day three of the show, which is uh, the first day that the public was allowed in. Raising the bar for insanity, manifold. <laughs> Check it out. What's up, everybody? Homer Ibarra back once again. Day three, Tokyo Game Show. GameSpot's coverage continues. I'm with my man, Ryan McDonald. How you doing, sir? I'm good. This is going to be the crazy day. I'm kind of scared, actually. Yeah, the, the line that the people wrapped around the building for like a half hour before it opened, insane. Probably the most people I've ever seen at TGS before. Absolutely insane. I mean, it's like they have two public days, like always, right? But yet, the masses still continue to show. Big time. Are we going to get in there and see what this looks like? I, I, yeah, I think so. We will. Let's go. Bean City. Bean City. Bean City. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan McDonald over here over at the Tidal booth. We're going to be checking out some Arkanoid and Space Invaders Extreme. If you remember Space Invaders, you got the little ship at the bottom of the screen, You're moving it back and forth, shooting up at the guys at the top. Look at this, Mega Blaster over here. That guy is just taking out all kinds of stuff. You can see by the backgrounds and the weapons, it looks like that's the extreme part of Space Invaders. This is, of course, on the DS as well. Looking good, Space Invaders Extreme. Happy to see that come back. Anybody remembers old school Arkanoid? Little thing at the bottom, you're bouncing the ball off it, bouncing it up and hitting the blocks up top. Looks about the same thing here, of course, on the DS. One of the cool things you're doing is you're using both screens, so it gives you like a little more real estate to see where you're going with it. All kinds of people lined up around here playing this. 
That's it from the Tato booth. I'm gonna see where Homer Rabara is. Take it away, Homer. Homer Rabara standing here at my stylist. If you can look down here, this game is really about picking your clothes from day to day. And uh, as you can see, you start out with this lady who's naked or a male, and if you're a male, you can take a look. You, you see, you got you got your watches, you got your little scarf action right there. You have some glasses, some shoes, so you can dress yourself according to what day uh, you you want to style yourself with. As you can see here, it says, do you enjoy choosing your clothes every day? Is it the same coordination all the time? You don't know what to choose. This is a stylist software for you. So apparently with a little PSP camera, you can uh, take pictures of your clothes and register them so that it'll save it in the PSP and then each day you can pick what clothes you want to wear each day. Um, Personally, I like to touch my clothes when I choose them. I don't know about, you know, taking a picture of them, but hey, you know what? For those who are, you know, style champs and who are always wanting to see how to coordinate themselves day to day, maybe even a week out, maybe even a month out, I guess my stylist is the software for you. So yeah, we find ourselves here in the cosplay alley. They've got all kinds of people, as you can see, around us and behind us. We got a little Chung Lee action over there, some Princess action over there. A little Toad, a little Sakura. At the dead metal burger with the rest of my crew, my hoverboard got stolen. We got nothing to do, so we're off to the basement to write some new music. I strap on my key guitar and I know how to use it. Nano bass beats shake the terrace apart. The neighbors calling the space cops that are showing their cars. Team City. Team City. Oh. Team City. Team City. Oh, yeah. At a packed home party, showing all of my moves, the dance floor on fire with my robot crews. I'm looking for those ladies with the bionic boosters built into their leg to make them taller and cuter. Then the alert comes right up on my wrist pump. The rape cops are here and all the slow kids will get stomped. Team City. Team City. Oh. Team City. Team City. Oh. What's up, Ryan McDonald? I'm standing here on the landing of the kids' area, and as, I, as you can see behind me, just like every other part of the show floor, this floor is also packed with all sorts of people, namely kids, playing a bunch of games. So uh, without further ado, let's go check it out. So this is it for day three and pretty much our live coverage of any of the stuff we're doing here at TGS. You've pretty much seen everything. I trust trust me when I say that. We brought you pretty much everything that's been here. Home Rebar for everybody that's been here in the crew. 
Yeah, thanks for watching and uh, you know, TGS 2007, it's always a good a good way to close out the show with Sonic, right? Sonic, have a hug, have a hug. Yeah, we go. Yeah! <laughs> Sonic Hedgehog, we'll see you next year. Woo! <laughs> And there you have it. That was the scene uh, at Tokyo Game Show for the public days. Oh, uh, it looked a lot like a music video to me. Yeah, it was a little, a little crazy. Yeah, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, that show is, is always crazy. Now, uh, Alex, you're here with a game that comes from Japan, but is coming here soon. In English. In English. Indeed, yes, I've brought uh, Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Phantom Hourglass, this is the DS game. This is the DS game. Sweet. It's uh, out next week. That's soon. Very soon. Yeah. So we had this on the show a while back in Japanese, uh, where Kevin poked on stuff, and we went and, and we, as, when asked what the story was, we went. Ah! So, yes. So what's going on in this game? Okay. So as far as I can tell, the story is uh, it picks up right after Wind Waker ended. Okay. And you're on the ship with uh, Tetra. Who so it's like the Porky's sequel then. Yeah, kinda. And Tetra's, you know, back to being Tetra. She doesn't want to be called Zelda. She's, you know, back to her pirate ways and whatnot. You're tracking down a ghost ship for some reason. Sure. Why not? Yeah. You know, um, and you encounter it. She jumps aboard the ship and is like, "Oh, I'm going to find treasure," and then instead gets sucked down in the ninth level of hell. That'll happen. And then Link j jumps after her, ends up falling in the ocean, wakes up on an island. There's a fairy. Uh, she so she doesn't know what's going on. Link wakes up on an island and yes. doesn't know what's going on. I know. Weird. I know. Let's see it. All right, let's just start playing. So. Um, as you may or may not know, this game is entirely touchscreen based. So, like, not even the, the trigger button or anything like that does anything? It's nope. just. Nope. Pressing buttons right now. Guess what? Guess what these buttons are doing? They bring up a menu. That's it. So they do do something. So you lied earlier. Yes, I did. I'm a liar. I hate oh, God. You. And uh, I'm tapping on these dudes to cut them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go sort of. I already halfway solved this puzzle. This is actually, I think, the puzzle that Kevin was doing last time yeah. he was here, but he couldn't do it because he couldn't read anything. So this the, uh... demo is like the second Porky's movie. Yeah, it totally is. I'm picking up right where we left off. Wow. Yeah. It's in fact, n but it's not going to be as good as Porky's 2. I'm sorry. <sighs> so, okay. So basically, I've got this map. Uh huh. And the map, I've already sort of drawn some stuff. Like, there's these four switches, and you have to do them in a certain order, otherwise bad things happen. Naturally, yeah. So, I'm going to go back. I've already written down half the order. Now there's these tablets over here, and I'm pushing this thing by dragging here and pushing the block. Oh, there's more dudes i got to cut. These bats. I hate bats. Cut the bats. I'm cutting the bats. And then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to read this tablet. Spoilers! First, second from the left. Okay. So what I can do is... Yeah, all right, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I know about the map. I know about the map. No, I know about the map. All right. So I'm going to go to the map. And so second from the left would be this one. So I'm going to write that down. Check it out. I just drew on it. And uh, that's uh, going to tell me the order I need to hit these switches. Okay. So I'm going over here. All right. So let's look at the map. One, two, three. All right. So we go to this one first. And that's just you tap on it and drag down to pull levers? Yeah. Pretty much. That's the second one. That's the fourth one, so I want to go to this one. Your powers of deduction are amazing. I know. I I totally took math in, like, first grade. What about his powers of seduction? Uh, not so good. Dude, whatever. <laughs> huh? I got a small key. That's that's why your powers of seduction you know are what? so good. You know what? We're not going to go there right now. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's uh, get some questions going. Yeah, let's and, get some uh, questions. Ryan, you got any questions from the audience that are not related to Alex's uh, prowess? Oh, give sack. me a second then. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, let's see here. Steven from uh, Toronto, T. Dot wants to know if you, uh, you think that the touch uh, controls are better than the traditional controls that you get in a Zelda game. Um, for the purposes of a DS game, yeah, I think so far they are. I like Dragon, like, like the, the controls are really responsive so far. Um, just tapping on a dude means you cut a dude, you know, Link moves pretty quick when you're just kind of dragging him around. How, how do you actually just make him run? Basically, you just push the stylus ahead of where you want him to go. And he'll run in that direction yeah. and you can loop it around? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this dude has a key that I need to get, so I'm going to push, I think I need to get this block here. Block his path. Yeah, so he can't go the other way. Come on, go. There we go. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And now he's got nowhere else to go. Is he going to come out? That's the question. I'm finding this out for the first time, by the way. So. Alright. 
keep an eye on that. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> dude took off. Ryan, more questions. More questions, dude. Uh, let's see here. Uh, give you from uh, Matthew in British Columbia. Get him, get him, get him. You got him, you got him. Nah. Smoke him. Oh. oh, okay. So somehow he made it out. This... Oh, I see what see, I gotta do. I gotta wait gotta for get him to get out of the way, and then way. he'll go over in the block. Yeah, see, now he'll... Nah, hey, Puzzle good. Masters, I got questions. Cut that dude. Oh, I missed him. Oh, jack that guy. Come All right, on. so uh, his first question's from uh, Matthew in British Columbia. He wants to know about any multiplayer modes. There are. I haven't messed with any of them yet. I keep missing him. Too fast. I'm gonna die. I think that's gonna be the really sad part. Is I'm gonna die. That's gonna suck. Um, uh, there are multiple. There's like a battle mode of some kind um, that you can. Jack him! Jack him! I jacked him. Totally jacked him. Totally got the key. All right. Yeah. Jack and fools. Um, yeah. There's a battle mode. I think you can like trade items with people and stuff. So there's that. Right on. Does it have any of like the, the straight up four sword stuff? No, not as far as I can tell. Cool. All right, let's get uh, let's get moving then, Alex. This is uh, looking pretty awesome. So I understand uh, you have uh, you've, you've brought something to promote. Yes, uh, I'm, I've, I've got a uh, I've got a product I'm promoting. Yeah. Um, specifically, I'm blogging as I uh, play through this game. I'm going to be doing updates uh, pretty much all throughout. Um, just kind of you know documenting my experience with the game. It's kind of an idea I sort of stole from you when yeah. you did it with Ocarina of Time. Oh yeah, I remember I that. I thought about uh, that was before there were blogs. Yeah, that was kind of before there were blogs. That was when it was like it was a feature. Yeah, you no, we just ran them as news just, stories. It yeah. was news that I was stuck in Zelda. That's yeah. how we that's how we got around. And that you were getting then. breakfast jacks and stuff. So yeah, that was pretty back awesome. in the 70s. Yeah, so we all had big sideburns. I think we're about to escape this dungeon. I think yes, freedom. All right. Cool. You're out and you're free. I'm free. All right, so, so yeah. uh, where can people go to find your that blog? Just go to my profile or go to the soapbox. Uh, I'll be adding uh, basically a new blog entry each day, and I'll be updating that blog entry throughout the day with stuff that I've done in the game. I'm going to avoid any major spoilers, so you you know that's safe. But you know, I'll just kind of give you an idea of how the game is playing and what's going on. I think the game's like 15 hours long is what I've heard quoted, so okay. probably won't go forever. But you know, it'll there, there should be a decent amount of stuff there if you're curious about the game on the fence about it. Just want to see how it is. Okay, Alex, thanks a lot for coming by. No uh, problem. Game looks cool. Um, it looks like you you made it well. I yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over <laughs> and uh, kick it over to the other set now, where Ryan is hanging out with Justin. What do you guys got going on over there? That's right, Jeff. I'm joined by uh, Justin Calvert. Justin, how's it going? It's going well, thank you, sir. Uh, you've brought along uh, Tomb Raider anniversary for the Wii. Correct. Now we've already seen this on the PS2, the PC, and the PSP. And uh, it's yep. still coming to the Xbox 360 in a crazy episodic format, as well as the Wii on an actual, you know, disc. Right. Like old fashioned games came. Yep. Uh, so we're looking at it right now. You're, you're fighting wolves already. This is one of the, the earlier areas in the game. Uh, just tell us about, obviously, the controls seem to be the, the, the big thing here. Tell us uh, what you're actually doing and how you're doing it. Okay, so uh, so you can you can still lock onto enemies, obviously, as uh -huh. I'm doing here. But then you also have to point the the remote as your gun to shoot stuff. So that's what that little blue so ring is there. There we go. Okay, so those are gone. Um, so yeah, the the controls. There's a lot of kind of moving around with the Wii controls. There you go. If I if I flick this, I use my grappling hook. Uh -huh. yeah, that's the nunchuck. So you'll um, you'll grapple towards wherever you have the the pointer at there. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then one of the things I wanted to show is they've actually added like some new puzzle elements and stuff. To the game for the Wii. All so right. uh, these cogs, if you've played the original Tomb Raider or the other versions of uh, Anniversary, you'll know that you just find the cogs and you just put them in these kind of mechanisms and they just work. Right, you just put it in and then you move on to finding the next uh, cog piece. Right, so now what I have to do is I actually have to mess around with these cogs and make it work. So I have to. So you actually have to make it so the, the, the teeth fit here. Yeah, and it's not like. It's not like the puzzles are taxing, but you know, they kind of... But this is also like some. one of the first sequences in the game, really. Oh yeah, So it's yeah, potentially sure. oh, yeah, yeah, becoming much more be complex some, as, you, uh, as yeah, you move on. I kind of hope there are some, uh, some tougher ones later on, because it's kind of fun. Now you said uh, there are other kind of uh, additional mini-games. Do you want to talk about those, or do you want to get there to that are. later? Um, I, can, I can go to another game save and show you them right now. Uh, let's, let's keep going through here if there's uh, something okay. else you want to show here. There's, uh, uh, there's, I mean, there's not a lot else that's new here. Uh -huh. um, How do the controls feel uh, with all the They're pretty the good. Stuff you know what, the only, the, only stuff, the only stuff I kind of have a problem with is the stuff where... Uh, like when Lara's shimmying along a ledge or swimming or anything like that, you yeah. have to just shake the nunchuck like crazy to make her go faster. Right. It used and to be like you'd tap the button as yeah, you went to you go faster. Yeah, you kind of tap the button rhythmically, and that kind of made sense. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that this 
does is kind of you know so you don't like just the the constant shaking of the nunchuck then hurt. All right, well, let's yeah. uh, let's jump out of here and let's uh, see okay. this other new bit let's of uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary gameplay. Uh, I guess the other question I have about the controls specifically uh, is camera controls, because that's always kind of been a, a, an issue. How does that uh, handle on the uh, It's actually pretty good. The, uh, the C button, you can tap it at any time uh -huh. to bring the camera right behind you. Uh -huh. uh, and then what you can also do is if you hold it down, and then you just move the Wii remote to look around. So you just like move it towards the sides of the screen. Yeah. And, uh, so at all times, there's a faint blue dot on the screen. Yeah. Uh, as long as I'm pointing, so you, and you can look around. It actually works pretty well. It uh, it takes a bit of getting used to when you when you've been playing the other versions, but yeah, it works. Oh, it's dark here. Yeah. So this is another of the new things. Is Lara's torch now? Uh, you can use it to. Uh, you can, or rather, you can point it with the Wii remote now. Uh -huh. So it's it's not a huge thing, but. Uh, it does seem like the like the, the integration sense. they're doing here is kind of smaller stuff, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, but that's I mean that, that makes sense. You can sure. move the torch around, and, then, and one of the things you'll be looking for, I guess, when you're uh, when you're pointing the torch around, I can show you over here. This is uh, this is another of the new features. So these kind of these are like secrets that are dotted all over the place, and some of them you need for puzzles, and some of them I think are just probably going to unlock bonus content. Sure. Uh, but Secrets so this and one here, and so, I'm, and stuff. Yeah. so here I'm using my trowel to get rid of all this sediment stuff. I'm oh. looking for the weak Press spot. Eight. So yeah, and I'm using my trowel. There get we under go. There. Oh, hey, look at there's a thing. There's something under here. Uh, so it vibrates when I find the weak spot. I get it under there and I give it a shake. There we go. What is it? I can't. It looks like a little man's face of some mm -hmm. kind. Shake it again. I think you've cursed us all so that, actually by <laughs> unlocking this. And so that, uh, and then you get to take a rubbing of it, moving the Wii remote again. And so sometimes these symbols uh, are things that will help you later on to solve a puzzle. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that some of them are just there, kind of for fun and to maybe unlock bonus content. There we go, the fertility god. Fantastic. Get that to Alex. <laughs> hey Jeff. Hey Ryan. How's it going? How what? How's it going? It's going okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, have you got any questions for I the, do uh, have a couple of questions home? here. Let's start with uh, Matt, who is standing somewhere on Road 2 in Windsor, California right now. Road 2? Cracking a glass bottle over someone's head because that's how Road 2 works. And uh, he wants to know, how do the graphics compare to the other versions of the game? What do you say, Justin? I'd say, I don't know, I mean, I... I've only played the PS2 one. I'd say they're definitely comparable to PS2, right? I mean, it seems it seems played. pretty pretty close. I played through the the PS2 and the PC versions, and uh, seems pretty comparable to the the PS2. Obviously, there's a 360 version coming that right. I expect will look much better. I would hope uh, so. I would hope so at least. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, in that regard, it uh, it probably not going to stack up to that. But I'd say it, it looks pretty close. Uh, Jeff, more questions? Yeah, here's one more from uh, Eduardo in Brazil. He wants to know, are the shooting controls precise? And uh, how does all that stuff work? You already went into some of that, but... Uh, yeah, so work, they work pretty well. It's um, basically you hold down Z and that will lock the camera onto the nearest enemy, uh -huh. uh, but not the gun. So you then have to point the gun using the, the thing on the screen there and just use the trigger. And it actually works really well. The only thing that's uh, a little tricky is to use her adrenaline dodge moves. Right, it's which, like a little slow-mo shot. Which shots. are pretty important. In right. some battles, you have well, to that, start that first, shaking that this thing. That first boss like, fight with the, the yeah, T Rex, with the T -Rex. You, you definitely need that there. Yeah, and you have to start shaking the nunchuck like crazy, and it's sometimes it just takes a little too long to kind of register. So, I think. so, so some of the stuff is a little bit uneven at this point. Yeah, just just the, the shaking of the nunchuck is just unnecessary. So that, that's that's where all of your problems it's at just, this point with yeah, the, the that's, controls that's are. That's the only problems I have. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I think just uh, yeah, don't do it. <laughs> that's Justin Calvert's pro tip. For game yeah, developers. For, for developers, don't make everywhere. me waggle the yeah. damn nunchuck all the time. Uh, Jeff, one more question. Nope. All right then, uh, <laughs> Justin. Thanks for uh, coming and giving us a look at uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary. Do you know the the release date for this one? Oh man, I always forget to look that stuff up. <laughs> I want to say it's uh, November. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say November. Yeah, November. November. Pretty sure all right. it's November. So November 2007. Look forward to this on the Wii. Justin, thanks for uh, coming by. Pleasure. Uh, up next, we have something else from TGS. Jeff, one that's, more thing? That's right, Ryan. We do have uh, one more piece from the Tokyo Game Show. So as you know, a lot of these other game trade shows have, uh, have toned it down a notch, gotten a little more business-oriented, and gotten rid of the booth babes, uh, which are ladies that are paid to stand there and go, We have video games! I don't know what any of them are, but I'm here! 
Um, that stuff is present and accounted for at Tokyo Game Show. GameSpot's own Aaron Thomas spent some time trying to uh, woo the ladies, and, well, here's what happened. Aaron Thomas here. I'm on the floor of the Tokyo Game Show. One of the questions I'm getting a lot is, when are you going to post more booth babes? Why are you writing previews and not posting booth babes? You want more booth babes? I'm going to give you more booth babes. Surely they have more to offer than just a pretty face. And I'm going to find out. Let's go. President Bush's approval ratings are at an all-time low. Do you think there's anything he can do to salvage his presidency, or is he just a lame duck and things aren't going to get better? Hi, uh, are you concerned with the current housing crisis in America, and do you think it's going to get worse before it gets better? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> what do you think about the Tim Donahue referee scandal in the NBA? Do you think all referees are going to lose their credibility, or is it an isolated incident? Oh, come on. Oh, okay. Well, you say tomato, I say tomato. We'll, we'll agree to disagree. Uh, uh, uh. Now, perhaps they're a little shy because they just don't understand America. I'm going to ask him something that impacts us all. Uh, the American dollar is at an all-time low, and it's affecting the entire global economy. Uh, how do you think, how is this affecting Japan? How do you think the uh, American dollar not being worth anything uh, is affecting Japan? Nothing? Okay, she's, she's got nothing to say. All right. Now, a lot of people say that Ichiro is just an over-glorified slap hitter. Uh, what do you think he brings to Seattle Mariners? Sorry, I can't speak English well. Uh, you know Ichiro. Yes, I know. Is, is he good? He's good. Yes, he's good. All right, there we go. Ichiro, he's good. Thank you. Do you think Sony made a mistake by not including Rumble in the controller the first time? Do you think they should add it now, or is it too late? How do you feel about the DualShock 3? I don't know. I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why they did it either. It just, you know, they should have had it in from the get-go, settle the lawsuit, give everyone the Rumble, right? All right, I think I've figured out the problem here, and it's a simple question of it being a language barrier. I've got a Japanese phrase book. I'm going to get to, to the heart of the matter here. Uh, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Uh, funu, funu yo shimatsu. <laughs> Kagi wa doko de kaimasu ka? Kaimasu ka. Kaimasu ka. They refuse to talk to me. I'm speaking Japanese. They just won't talk to me. Open up to me. How, how are you feeling today? Exactly. I knew, I knew they had something important to say. Thank you very much. Kokohatsu saremas mambiki. Don't do it again, okay? Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. It looks like the only way I'm ever going to find out about the life of a booth girl is to become one. All right. Would you like to take my photo? Me. I don't want you. Me. As you can see, the booth girls have a lot to offer. So if you ever make it over here to the Tokyo Game Show, remember, there's more to these women than just a pretty face. <laughs> Aaron Thomas is a bad person. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron, for that important feature from the Tokyo Game Show. I don't think you'll be allowed back. Uh, <laughs> Which makes room for Justin Calvert, who is here on the couch. He wasn't me. allowed back either. Yeah, well, yeah. That's you, uh, you had your own uh, passport <laughs> issues, uh, but you're back in the U.S. I am, thankfully, and uh, you've brought with you this delightful little puzzle game called Prism. Uh, Prism. I'm sorry. What is that? Prism? Light the way. And that's the DS game. What is this game all about? So, uh, no. this game is. Oh, where, where do I start? There's uh, okay. There's there's a race of. Uh, the creatures called. Uh, would you believe I'm getting stuck on this level now <laughs> for the first time? Um, these creatures are called. I've totally lost the name. Bull, bulbies, bull boys, or bullboids, something like that. We're going with bullboids. And they uh, they need light to survive. Naturally. So they go live in these dark caves, mm -hmm. and they're only seems hope. like a pretty bad idea. You, if yeah. you need light to survive. Go figure. Um, and so, and so, so now I come along as these aliens, the little green dude that are moving around here, and they emit light. Uh -huh. And so the whole point of this thing is that you have to get light to the uh, bulb, bows. The alien dudes. Yeah, you have yeah. to get light to them. Actually, no, they're called glo globos. Globos. Or something like that. And I'm called a, I'm called a bulb. Bulbasaur, bulb boy. But it makes sense, bulb, because they're like a light bulb. Exactly. Okay, so bulbasaurs. <laughs> 
and Trico. Here we are. Oh, there we go. Okay, I finally solved it. Thank for that. <laughs> um, so it, it uh, so, goes on like this, and there are level after level. So uh, this, yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of levels, and the, and then you nice. get you get these different colored ones, oh. and you get T junctions, and and you have to use mirrors and T junctions and crystals and stuff to get the right colored light to the right colored dude and. Dudes need colored light. And it's, uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Any kind of multiplayer options or any other stuff going on? There actually are some multiplayer options. I haven't cool. had a chance to uh, check them out yet, but I'm oh, sure nice. there'll be no shortage of volunteers in the office later. So, yeah, uh, to get some, some prism, light the way. Well, thanks yeah. for coming by, Justin. Uh, any idea when this is coming out? This is coming out in about two or three weeks from now. Oh, that's pretty soon. All right, cool. Well, yeah. thanks a lot. Uh, moving on, Kingdom Under Fire, Circle of Doom. Ryan and Brad are over there ready to cut dudes and listen to heavy metal. Take it away. I think you said it wrong. I think it's Kingdom Under Fire, Circle of Doom. 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 Yeah, something like that. You gotta, you gotta say it real metal like that. Yeah, there's not much metal in this, though. So that's kind of been a thing that we've loved about the Kingdom Under Fire yeah. games for a while, is like it's been this like Korean art style and this yeah. this weird like action, real-time strategy combo, yeah, and the then most... hardcore death metal yeah. soundtrack. And most of that's gone now. Uh, I, did, I did catch some at the menu screen here, yeah, but uh, yeah. let's, let's go ahead and jump right into uh, Circle of Doom. Yeah, so just a little background, like you said. Circle of Doom. I'm, I'm throwing the horns right now. You can't see that, but uh, yeah. So a little background on this. Kingdom Under Fire was a PC overhead RTS. It kind of sucked. Yeah, it was okay. It became a really interesting hybrid of action and strategy. It was sort of like Dynasty Warriors meets uh, a strategy game. When, when it yeah. came to the, when it was on uh, the Xbox. original original Xbox. So now uh, the developer Blue Side from Korea, they're working on this new one. Uh, which actually strips out those strategy Fight mechanics. Those Alright, I'm trying to... T t t playing and talking is kind of tough at the same time. I know, I know. Um, so, so this is yeah, okay, so a, a different... This is a, uh, not the uh, action strategy yeah, that we've just, gotten used to. This is more to, of a dungeon crawl. Just to get this out of the way, uh, for people who liked those two strategy action games on the Xbox, they are making another one of those, but understandably it takes longer to make than a hack and slash game. Uh, this one is actually... Um, Whoa, this guy's big. That's a giant tree man. Yeah, he's huge. Uh, so this one, this one, the storyline here sort of bridges the gap between the last, uh, the last couple of games on the Xbox and then this new one that's coming out later. So this is sort of like a, you can see it as like a side story or something like that. Um, so yes, it is. It is an action RPG, hack and slash, um, and loot. I see tons of loot. Yeah, so it does have that Diablo kind of loot lust thing going on. Uh, probably the, the most unique things about the mechanics here are if, I don't know if you can see in the video stream, but in the lower right, those are actually four buttons on the uh, Xbox controller, and so you can just jump to this little. Ooh, actually, sorry, I have leveled up here. Let me. Uh, so let's talk about the leveling okay, a little bit. Let's or, do the okay, let's okay, I'll show you the weapons first. Okay, so, so you've got these uh, slots corresponding to different buttons, and you can just pop up, say, okay, so I have I have a, a heater shield of blast on my A button, so I'll pop this up. I hear and, you're handy with the heater. Uh, yeah, well, what can I say? I've been practicing. Um, but so you got all this stuff that you can drop into, into the different slots. So like I could swap that shield out for... Nice. How about I switch up for Siege Bow of Blast? Um, so, all right, so now I've got this uh, kind of crossbow and my trusty lion tooth hammer here. So you can combo up with these uh, yeah, multiple yeah. weapons Yeah, then? so you can have two weapons and two special abilities, and I'm totally going to get ransacked while I'm trying to talk about this stuff. Uh, That's okay. So I've got my lion tooth hammer here is the main kind of melee weapon I've got. I'm going to back up and use my crossbow too. When you're using ranged weapons, you get kind of like a Gears of War style little, uh, oops, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting the words here. You get the little aiming mode there if you want. Uh, let me take care of this guy here. I say, like, this looks really nice. Yeah, it looks very good. I mean, the, the, the games on the Xbox also took really good advantage of that hardware. Ouch. Oh, you um, hit. Which one's your health? Whoa, what's going on over here? Are these guys crying? Yeah, you better cry. I can't tell what's going on at all. I, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the, the number of dudes it's throwing at you. Yeah, it definitely yeah. has kind of a... Maybe even a little bit of a Dynasty yeah, Warriors vibe it has, to it. Well, you know, even the Xbox games have that going on, too. Although they had, like, also the strategy layer on top of it. But uh, here, I would say, I mean, like, it seems like it's going to be more interesting than, good God, than those, those traditional hack and slashes. Because, like I was saying, so not only can you map these different weapons to different buttons, but you can upgrade a lot of the weapons. Like, like that of blast sure. suffix, uh, apparently, I think it means, like, that gives it sort of like a, kind of like a fire property to it. 
Uh, you can turn some of your melee weapons, you can turn them into like boomerang style kind of weapons, so you can throw them and they'll hover and hit guys and then come back to you. So what you're saying, crafting? Crafting, yes. In fact, uh, I don't know if you saw just now, I killed a guy and it popped up, it said like like six of ten blue lizard men killed or something. Sure. Uh, to learn new abilities, uh, you actually do like sort of MMO style kill quests where you actually go out and kill like five of these guys, ten of these guys, twenty of those, and then you come back and you get the ability. So um, is, is the combat pretty just button mashy here? Uh, it's not like you're... To an extent. Actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that because, uh, again, you probably can't see this on your screen, but the little blue bar down there is your skill points. And that sort of functions as mana, but it's essentially it's mana that corresponds to everything you do. So like, okay, so you just kind of like If you to... notice, like when I swing... Ow. God, this is bad news. When I swing this giant hammer, you can see my skill points go way down because every time you swing a weapon, that happens. Um, if I was using a lighter weapon, how about I trade up for... this? Okay, so the, the, the hammer I was using was like attack 18, and this mace is attack 4, so it's a lot weaker. But, but you can it, attack but it much uses, more quickly. It uses, yeah, it's faster and it uses fewer skill points per swing so I can get a bigger combo off. So it seems like there is actually a lot of depth just determining like what weapons are the best for the situation based on all those parameters. Um, what else can I talk about? Okay, so the leveling up, yeah, it is, it is a full action RPG, so you, you're getting experience points as you're playing. When you level up, you get these attribute points, and then like, so one extra hit point costs two attribute points, but one extra skill point costs 26 attribute points. So you can basically cash in your points however you want. Like, I'm getting some skill points here, but now I can get some health points. Check out my luck a little bit, so you can kind of customize how your dude progresses. Are, are those the only attributes you really have to worry about? Uh, as far as I know, skill points, those, points, and luck. Those three, yeah. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what luck determines. Put all the points into luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, uh, what do the folks at home want to know about uh, Circle of Doom? Well, uh, John in Australia and Chris in New York both have the same basic question. Want to know how hard is the game? Uh, What's the general I'm, level of challenge? I'm, like? I'm getting kind of worked here, as you can see. Well, it seems like you're getting attacked, but if that, if that red bar there is your health, it doesn't seem like they're necessarily taking off that yeah, much. Yeah, it, it hasn't been extremely difficult so far. I mean, you, you do pick up a lot of health potions, and you can use those at any time. So, um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of the guys. Like, similar to Dynasty Warriors, a lot of these lesser enemies will just kind of stand there and take it. You know, they don't fight back that much. So. Sure, unlike this uh, wood golem who's yeah, kind of yeah, giving you so the business. These, these odds aren't quite as insurmountable as they appear. I need that. Oh, you know what I did? I need that crossbow back, actually. Okay. All right, well, uh, yeah. Jeff, more questions? Uh, yes. Steven in uh, Toronto wants to know, what do they replace the metal with if there's not that much death metal in it? Uh, it's what a little else? more ambient, actually. Uh, I mean, the, the music does sort of heat up when you're, when you're in one of these big intense battles uh -huh. that I'm actually running away from here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and again, this is not replacing the existing uh, Kingdom Under Fire yeah, that, gameplay structure. Yeah, that seemed to be a, a, a misconception when this was announced. Yeah, they're not... They're not abandoning that kind of gameplay entirely. It's, this is this kind is, of like a side story? This, this is just to tide you over until that, that big next epic strategy like Battlefield game comes out. So. Well, it's obviously confusing because they don't really differentiate in the titles that is, of these. That is true. You know just, they just slap a subtitle on it and that's a new one. Sorry, I just ran back to the beginning of the level. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jeff, you want to give me one more question? All right. Uh, here's the last question from Alex. Uh, he wants to know, do you have to plan your attack on bosses or can you just run up on dudes and hack and slash? And um, I haven't seen any bosses per se. I've just seen a lot of these kind of bigger guys, like the uh, the wood golem that I fleed from, like a like featured a, players, like a coward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there will be a lot of bigger, like giant plant monsters and stuff like that. Uh, there probably are some bosses in here. There's actually some interesting in between mission stuff that I don't really have time to show you, unfortunately, where you actually like go to sleep and sort of talk to these spirits in the dream world and they do stuff for you. But uh, oh, why so sad? I don't know. Ow. But they're uh, they're oh, jacking me oh, up. Oh, somebody's working me here. Uh, and before we we wrap this up, uh, you want to touch a little bit on the the co-op stuff in this? Yeah, I mean, there's actually a lot to talk about in this game. So there there is online co-op where you can play through the entire game with up to four people total. Uh, there's six playable characters that you just pick at the outset. So uh, anybody can be playing any of those uh, any of those characters. Um, there's a bunch of little trinkets you can get. Actually, this is totally absurd. We saw it at TGS where you can put like crazy gear on your guys just to differentiate like if four people are using Kendall like I'm, I've got here like you can put a like a big red ball cap on him um, like horns you know you can put masks that look like the faces of the developers on him like it's so, just totally so thematically relevant stuff totally right? yeah yeah absolutely of course <laughs> uh, it's, it's totally ludicrous but in a, in a fun amusing way so very cool yep uh, so Kingdom Under Fire Circle of Doom yes. 
It's coming to the Xbox 360 and uh, uh, yes. is it also the PC. Uh, we have a listing for that. I, had, I don't think we've seen it on the PC, but. Uh, and the release date is. Uh, I'm gonna die. Uh, <laughs> All right, excellent. <laughs> uh, I think I think they're shooting for toward the end of the year. All right, so uh, sometime fourth, soon, expect this on the Xbox 360. Yep. Uh, Brad, thanks for coming and uh, giving us a look. Yep, absolutely. Jeff, you want to set up this next thing? Yeah, sure. So uh, at this point, you've probably made up your mind. You're either on board or totally against Halo 3. You might be stoked to hear more about it or totally sick of hearing about it. So you're either going to be really pumped or really bummed out when I tell you that this might be one of the last times we talk about Halo 3 because it's out now. You're out there playing it. Uh, except for the game guide that we'll have later and of course the inevitable tournament and well they're gonna release maps at some point. Anyway, we sent a bunch of cameras out and had some fun around the Halo 3 launch and this is what we came back with. Take a look. Hey, what's up? Brian McDonald here, and I'm in Vacaville, California, which is about 60 miles north and east of San Francisco. It looks like Halo 3 is just as big here as is anywhere else across the nation. Hello, I'm Jeff Gersman. We're here live on the scene from the Halo 3 line. It's official. The game is coming out. It's a very exciting moment. I'm here with actually one of GameSpot's own, the first man in the line, a dedicated fanatic, Alex Navarro. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's awesome. Halo's going to be here, man. It's going to be here tonight. I can't all wait. I can't really help but notice that, I mean, you're there's no... There's, there's no one else in the line here. Yeah, there's no one else here. No one has joined you in line here, as I see. Um, how do you feel about that? What's that? What's that? This is more Halo for me, man. This is more for me. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Right. Hang in there. here with uh, one of the employees here at the 7-Eleven. What's your name, sir? My name is Deepak, sir. Awesome. I'm Jeff. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, um, how did this whole Halo thing start? When did you first find out that you were supposedly going to be selling a video game here? Uh, actually, it's uh, probably last month I heard about it and just the French editor told me about it. This day, uh, I suppose going to launch some games about it and probably 7-Elevens have the authorities and to sell the games and all so probably like big store sale the cost going in circuit city about the games and also they guys are, the company's trying to get the games the new games and good games about it so it's pretty good for us and all hmm. yeah as everyone is waiting for it it's a big movement you know it's like so we didn't get yet and uh, i hope that we can get it tomorrow and it's gonna have big fun oh yeah Legendaries are back against the wall. I just don't trust it right now. We got like a lot of customers coming in and asking about it and it's kind of like uh, something problem for me from the back end all. So I would like to say that like, probably tomorrow and when we can get all the details in the games and all Oh wow. 
all those boxes are all right. <laughs> So it's 12.15 and um, no game. Yeah, there's no Halo here. Yeah, I, I meant to tell you, I uh, spoke with one of the gentlemen inside uh, a little while ago, had him come out and, and, and talk to him, and uh, they don't have the game at all. They aren't gonna have it until sometime tomorrow. How's that make you feel? Well, I've got, I mean, all right, well, he's gone. It uh, seems like this adventure hasn't really worked out quite so well for buying the game, but, you know, I, I didn't really tell him this either. I, I, I've had a copy of the game for a couple of days now, I, so I guess, hey, we can just skip right to plan B. Can I get uh, two hot spots, please? Absolutely. To plan B. To plan B. <laughs> you want to come back to my place and maybe play a little Halo 3? That looked like it hurt. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that hurt. Not as bad as the three takes before that one did, though. <laughs> um... Uh, I also That's why tried I don't work to with drunk people. I also tried to go and get uh, Halo at a 7-Eleven. How'd that go and, for uh, you? I got the gas face. Yeah, you, you got nothing. I got I got nothing. Know how? I uh, went down. I like a week before I went and pre-ordered it, and uh, I had my little slip in my receipt and everything. And I went down uh, on Monday night, ready to to get it. And I checked in early, and they said, "Yeah, we're not going to get it until like tomorrow afternoon or something." They didn't know, so uh, I. Yeah, I guess the official word is that happened to a lot of 7-Elevens. The distributor two-dayed them instead of one-dayed them. Whoops. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like uh, kind of distribution issues for uh, the 7-Eleven, but yeah. uh, I still have faith. I still want to believe and I still want to buy video games and get nachos at the same time. Yeah, that's uh, a beautiful dream. Speaking of beautiful dreams, yes, uh, you have every extend extra extreme. I do at over that. There. This is and, from Q uh, Entertainment. Yeah, so let, let's take a look at that. That looks uh, pretty crazy. Now this is a, a shooter that was originally like a free PC game that they brought it out on the on the, the PSP, and now it's Xbox Live Arcade. What what can you tell us about it? Well, it was every extend extra. Actually, I guess it was every extend when it was a, a PC kind of freeware student project thing, and it became every extend extra when they made it for the the PSP, and now it is every extend extra extreme, or E4 as they like to call it. The kids, they call it E4. Uh, so there's a... Uh, the, the basic gameplay is pretty similar to, to what was in Every Extend Extra, which is kind of, it was an anti-shooter. I'll, I'll boot this up real quick. And uh, the idea is basically instead of, you know, you've got your little thing you're controlling here, instead of trying to shoot everything, you're blowing yourself up to nice. cause these chain reactions to blow up these uh, crazy things that are flying around. And the longer you can keep the chains going, the, the better your score. So are you saying this game promotes suicide? Base, I, yeah, I, I basically it's a virtual suicide bomber. That's the, oh. and they're Finally, letting kids right? play this? <laughs> it's shocking. It's a shock. So they've gone ahead and they've made it safe for uh, America with, uh, with a new extra mode e. here. Yeah. First, well, actually, uh, as an aside, the game's not really a rhythm game, but it's, it's definitely, the music plays a, a big part of it. So there's uh, an, a new mode here, Wiz Your Music, which lets you uh, use your own music as the background. Yeah. And then there is The Revenge. R4. Uh, which, uh, which is not Ridge Racer Type 4 in this No, case. no, no. So this basically uh, turns this game back into kind of what it was the antithesis of before a, a, a regular old shooter. You have a couple different options. It's, you'd think this would be like a, a, like a dual stick four-way shooter or eight-way shooter, kind of like a Robotron knockoff, but that's not really the case. You can uh, either have the, all the bolts fly out of all sides or you can have it come out of one side. I actually think I prefer the, the four-way axial shot yeah. and cruise speeds, how fast you go. I tried turning this up and that turned it super crazy, so we'll just uh, do this. We'll keep it regular crazy. A regular level of crazy. Obviously, this game is all about kind of its, its, its crazy visuals, so... Uh, so now I'm actually shooting. I'm just holding down the A button and running around and trying not to die. I oh, can, but you still uh, have all the combos and all the other stuff of the other game, so it's still 
it, similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely, it, and it's got all the same arts uh, assets in it uh, in that regard, but uh, the gameplay is pretty dramatically different. Uh, and still not like a traditional uh, shooter exactly. Yeah, I mean, so it, you know, I think people want to draw comparisons to something like Geometry Wars, but you're not actually you know, controlling the direction of your shots, per se, are no, you? No, no, no. I, I could waggle the right, tr uh, you know, stick around here all I want, and that does nothing. Okay. But uh, I can... It's it's interesting the way the, like, if, if you see here, I'm I'm turning, or I'm moving uh, up and down, and my shots are remaining where they are, and that's because I'm just slamming the stick up and down, left and right. If I go okay. at these angles, it'll start turning my shots. I see. Uh, so, let's go to some questions here. Warren in San Jose asks, This game looks cool. Am I in the future? Yep. Okay, great. Um... Let's see, I guess this is... Welcome, Warren. Uh, yeah, it's good to okay, have you. Uh, have some freeze-dried ice cream. Rich in Massachusetts writes and says, E4... Oh, E4.0. No. Is this game hyphy? Uh, I'd say it's pretty hyphy. Mmm. I'd say it's off that num-num. True. Get some gorilla milk and play it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's... it's so far, suey in the bushes. So far, what I've played of it, it's it's definitely, uh, you know, big on the eye candy. Gameplay is pretty simple. It hasn't been super challenging as of yet, but uh, it definitely ramps up as you play. Cool. All right, well, thanks. Uh, do we know when it's going to come it's, out? No. No, we don't. It's an Xbox Live Arcade it's game. Xbox of course Arcade. we don't They never know. tell us. Yeah. We'll find out on some Tuesday. So. Yeah, some, uh, some random Tuesday. So that looks cool. That was one of the games they showed back at... Uh, the Tokyo Game Show. So, uh, all right, we're uh, just about wrapped up here. Oh, wait. Okay, I understand my helmeted friend here has something to say about Rock Band. So, I guess uh, you came through here. This. Okay, if I'm reading this correct, the PlayStation 2 version of Rock Band is officially confirmed for North America. Previously, it had only been confirmed for Europe. So. Now we know that. Uh, great. That's great. Gr that's, that's great. Yeah, that's going to do it for the show. Tune in next week. We'll have more of the same. And we'll blow it up all crazy. See you next week.